everyone, Miss Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we will be studying the fifth grade science book, Mixtures and Solutions, Investigation 1, Separating Mixtures, Part 2, Separating a Salt Solution. Question, where does the solid material go when a solution is made? Let's find out. For today's investigation, we will be using salt, water, cups, Legos, evaporation dishes, stir sticks, a scale, and data sheet for making a solution, and a response sheet for investigation one. Today we will be investigating salt solutions. Where does the solid material go when a solution is made? So when I mix this salt into this water, where does the salt go? When the salt dissolves, does it go away? How can we prove or disprove this? One way we can find out what happened to the salt is by weighing the solution. Here's our scale and here is our salt solution. Our salt solution weighs 65 grams. Now here is our cup of water, 50 mLs of water with no salt, and that weighs 60 grams. So even though these two cups look identical, we know which one has the salt in it because it weighs five grams more. So let's look at our data sheet. Our salt solution weighed 65 grams. Our water and cup weighed 60 grams. That means that the salt inside of our cup weighed five grams. So the salt did not disappear, it's still in there. It does make the weight of our cup five grams more. So we know that the salt did not disappear. Another way to find out where the salt goes when a solution is made is by evaporating the solution. If we evaporate the water and there is salt in the solution, the salt should be left behind when the water is gone. So I poured the salt solution into our evaporation dish and we'll let the water evaporate out. After a few days, this is what is left. Once the water has evaporated, the salt that is left is in the form of a crystal. We can identify the type of crystal by its properties, such as shape, color, and pattern. A salt crystal is square with an X from corner to corner. So let's look at the response sheet for this investigation. Student A and student B each measured the mass of three materials. They put the materials together and measured the mass of the mixture. Below are the graphs that student A and student B made to show what they did. Explain which graph you think better shows that the mass of materials doesn't change when they are mixed together. So here's student A's graph and here's student B's graph. Pick one graph that you think better shows that the mass of materials doesn't change when they are mixed together. For this response, there really is no right or wrong answer. It's all about your explanation, why you picked the graph you picked, and if you understand the law of conservation of mass. Now the law of conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. So if we, if we weigh all of the reactants before a chemical reaction, the weight after the chemical reaction will be the same even if the products are different. 
Let's take these Legos, for example. If I weigh them, they come out to 30 grams. If I rearrange them, they will still weigh 30 grams. That is because, like a chemical reaction, I did not create or destroy any Legos. And that is the law of conservation of mass in a nutshell. So let's discuss the results of our investigation. If a solid material is mixed with water and it disappears, the mixture is a solution. Salt dissolves in water to make a salt water solution. The salt is still in there, it's just transparent. And we can get the salt back by evaporating the water. When the water is evaporated, the salt that is left is in the form of a crystal. If you make a salt solution at home, you can just taste it to know that the salt is still in the water. I hope you enjoyed our investigation. Until next time, have a great day.